Well, it's time for another little Lotus update. And I just thought I'd do a little bit of filming. The sun was shining a moment ago, but now the clouds have come over and it's quite breezy out here, so I hope you can hear me okay. Anyway, let's get the garage open and have a look. Well, that's not an Excel, and it's not red. So I have a confession to make, and that is, I also own a 1981 Lotus Esprit S3, and have done for about 18 months, and I don't think I've ever properly mentioned it on the channel. Now, if you remember back to me buying the white Excel, that was because Esprit prices had got so high, I didn't feel I wanted to spend that much money and bought the, the white Excel as a project. Well, then this car turned up. And so I'll quickly run through what this car is, why it was relatively affordable, and why it's actually in some circles quite a well-known car. So you'll notice it currently has no suspension on the front and nothing really on the rear at the moment and this was a slammed esprit this was on air ride so I think there's still a build sequence on the retro rides forum somewhere and it's also not stock in the engine department and I can't get around that way and quite honestly at the moment the camera is giving you better lighting conditions than it reality is giving me Let's squeeze back here and see how one moment the there isn't enough height in here. I've got to get make sure the bubble rack is on the bubble rack is on the hatch to stop it hitting things. So what you see in the back here is a three-litre 24-valve Alfa Romeo Busso V6, uh, coupled to the original Citroen-derived gearbox, and running a brace of. Triumph motorcycle throttle bodies. Um, and much of the engineering on this car was done pretty well, but it has all sorts of detail issues, uh, things that aren't well done, like an ECU that's held in by one loose bolt, and many, many, many other things. But I want this as a car to drive. And I want it as a car that's actually practical to some degree. And I mean, you can see, well, as much as you can see in the poor lighting in here, there's no rear tray in here. But normally you've actually got a reasonable amount of um, stowage. You know, you can certainly do your weekly shop with the car but all of this area was taken up with an air tank and air compressors and control valves and such like um, also you had to wait for the car suspension to pump up before you could drive it because when parked it sat so low it was actually sitting on the tyres um, at the front it certainly if not the rear but the original suspension arms um, have a spring platform hang on it's starting to rain I'm going to have to retrieve some stuff okay so as standard you have a spring platform at the top but the, the so the spring abuts to the spring platform and the load doesn't go through the the damper 
it has a spring platform on the lower link and the anti-roll bar forms a stabiliser link to a bush arrangement in around this position. So I did get the original lower arms with this car but they've been badly cut around to fit the air ride suspension and then been replaced with a set of fabricated lower arms that allowed the car to sit even lower. Now those arms are hard to find and expensive, the stock ones, but the, the turbo Esprit and the Series 3, which is the normally aspirated version of the turbo, swapped from the Opel Ascona front suspension of the S1 and S2 to the Triumph based front suspension that was used on the Lotus Elite and Ecla before in 1985 going to a Toyota based front suspension which is very similar um, to the Excel which also uses the anti-roll bar as a link on the Excel but on the Esprit they added a rigid link with an extra mounting at the front so it became a, um, a lower wishbone rather than a transverse link with a stabiliser. So this is a pair of Elite or Eclat links which were much cheaper and more readily available than Series 3 Esprit and are geometrically the same they simply don't have the spring platform and I shall be using dampers with an adjustable spring platform. Now there have been various discussions online um, with people converting to spring platforms about the suitability of this lower link and this bolt to take the full suspension load to which I would point out well the Elite and the Clark used a spring platform and are much heavier at the front due to that being where the engine is. So. Um, I was just checking a few things out, that's why this, this link is, is sitting where it is. I was taking some open and closed measurements. But I've got to repair these lower links, or in fact modify them. And uh, we'll pop back into the main workshop and I'll show you um, what that's all about. Excuse the mess on the bench, it is of course my bench and therefore it is messy. So here's one of the original lower arms and you can see all of this hacked away metal that was part of the, um, the air ride conversion. Um, these look far worse, I've done some other stuff to them. So this is the stock mounting arrangement of the anti-roll bar to the lower link and this is one of the fabricated lower links used to get the car sitting absolutely as low as possible on that air ride suspension and you've got these pressed steel cups on either side of the arm and they're usually distorted and the center hole is quite worn on older cars um, these are polyurethane bushes which actually seem to be softer than the uh, the rubber bushes you can now get but I think the problem with polyurethane is whilst its actual durometer, it, its hardness um, is suitable it doesn't have the resilience of the rubber so it tends to take this permanent set and distortion and of course this is an extra source of compliance under braking your look, the lower link is being pulled backwards by the braking load and um, is potentially giving you a little bit of un instability under braking which is the tires got bigger and the brakes got more powerful um, is I think why on the Toyota based cars you had a strut welded to the wishbone welded to the lower link making it into a wishbone 
So I would have to make would have to make a set of these cups. Um, either by making a little press tool or machining them out of solid, or I could buy them from uh, Lotus Bits, but they're twenty pounds each plus VAT, and there's a total of four. So instead, what I've chosen to do is to replace the bushes with this stainless steel PTFE lined um, spherical bearing. And this is the one that's also used um, by, for instance, Canley Classics for their trunnionless conversion. And I'll perhaps talk about the, um, the Triumph trunnion and its replacement um, a little bit later. But this is rated um, in the axial direction, i.e. the direction it's going to be loaded under braking, um, for about three tonnes. So it, it is adequate for the job. And what I've done is I've machined up a housing for it, which will get fitted through the lower link. Um, so in order to do that, I need to enlarge the hole, and these are a steel pressing. And here's one I've experimented on. This is one of the scrap ones. You can see all the grinding marks on it. And I made up a special tool, um, or modified a tool, in order to centre up on the existing hole and use a hole saw. And it ends up just a little bit undersized, so I've just got to skim it out slightly to get it to fit, which is better than it being loose. And the way the lip works, it'll be up against um, this lip under braking, and then get some little welds to hold it firmly in place, but the major load will be in the direction of this shoulder. So what I've got here is a nominal 35mm hole saw, which is actually the diameter I've machined this to, um, and with a 3 quarter inch uh, pilot that I've fitted in place of the standard quarter inch pilot drill and uh, that allows me to just do this in the drill press. This hole needs a bit of clean up to get the pilot to, to fit because I think these holes were originally just stamped and uh, so I'm actually going to do the, the lower links I'm going to be using and I'll get them set up um, in the pillar drill. So a very straightforward setup, um, just sitting on a bit of wood because of the return flange, and uh, centred up. And I've decided this side is is too much of an oval to guide the um, the pilot, so I will in fact be using the unworn hole. I've got to check that. Yeah, I've got to just do a little bit of fettling too because of the, the inner skins, the two aren't perfectly aligned and there is in fact a bit of weld there. Um, and of course it's vitally important that I machine the opposite hand on the two arms um, but I haven't got my tripod out here and there's not really room near the drill press to set it up well so I'll just um, do this off camera. And there we go, all done. So uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that uh, there is a circlet groove in these to uh, retain the uh, spherical bearing. But these, I had to do a little tiny bit of um, clean up work with a carbide burr, um, just a touch uh, to get these to to fit in, which they do beautifully. So, a couple of welds in the back here to retain these in place. The ball joints um, fitted in, and then I'll just have to do some um, spacer sleeves to go on the, the anti-roll bar, 
Um, there was a spacer tube between the two bushings. Uh, it can be quite difficult to get off the uh, the anti-roll bar, they tend to rust. Some people have suggested that sleeve is too short and over compresses these bushings and in fact um, on both sides these have been cut down uh, possibly for that reason but in any case um, I think this solution um, will be better. Now Canley um, don't run any kind of dirt exclusion on these uh, they say just a quick spray of WD-40 though I'd actually use something that contains oil which WD-40 really doesn't um, but what I may do is source some uh, replacement um, ball joint boots uh, to slip over the, uh, the anti-roll bar just to give this a little bit of um, additional protection because why not even if it's not a problem why not do it anyway so I'm really quite pleased with that and um, there might be some more updates on the car depending on what work I get to do on it um, I need to order a set of, um, of, of springs for it and there will be custom ones at the front to um, suit the new arrangement with the spring platform on the damper so this is the notorious Triumph Trunnion um, swivel joint. Um, now this is a particular example, this is a Spitfire or um, disc brake Herald upright as opposed to a uh, Vitesse GT6 type which has a bolt-on adapter and is a little bit lighter perhaps. Uh, but this is also known as the Alford and Older um, suspension upright which has graced many cars up to and including Formula One in the 1960s um, because it was um, very light and strong yes they're cast but they're cast steel not cast iron as many people seem to believe I don't seem to think that things can be cast out of steel um, now you can see a little hole here is for lubrication and this stem is is hollow and you can see that it is threaded and this allows this joint and this side is a left-hand side because it has a left-hand thread when screwed home it allows it to pivot for steering whilst at the same time the thread retains it in place and this one's actually in pretty decent condition there's only a little bit of play but, but the problems with these are one, lack of maintenance and two is that if you do maintain them it should be EP90 oil not grease you need to get a decent quality grease gun and fill it with oil to inject through the lubrication point um, now these can seize and snap the threaded portion off because of course there's, there's a stress razor at the end of the thread or simple corrosion up here at uh, the end of the thread can cause a weak point and again the suspension can collapse and this, this used to be a, um, a frequent occurrence I can, see, I can remember seeing at least two Triumph Spitfires sitting at the side of the road with their wheel folded up into the wheel arch uh, it often actually seemed to happen on things like roundabouts when the um, and that was more to do with a um, a seized trunnion that you know this would just be full of rust and the um, winding on all, all that lock on a roundabout at low speed with the loadings would cause them to to snap now there's a company called Canley Classics that do a new upright that isn't machined with a thread it's machined with a, a parallel section threaded at the bottom for a retaining nut and they do a housing that replaces this trunnion that holds one of these um, stainless steel joints and if anyone is interested the number is an ABWT10 um, and this is an NMB which is a quality Japanese 
uh, manufacturer. So I haven't decided whether I'm going to convert the trunnions, the ones on the car seem to be in good condition. Um, if I do, I won't be using the Canley Classics housing, I shall be machining my own and welding it directly onto the lower links.